What is going on, everybody? It is Frank the Tank, and welcome to week number 20 of Leagues. So, um, like the title of the video says, I'm looking for some redemption after that horrible, horrible performance uh, last week, week number 19. Um, and, you know, after that week had concluded, I looked back on it and, and realized that I was, like, totally lost. I... I, I I don't know. I wasn't 100% all there, if you know what I mean. I mean, um, one thing that's for sure that I noticed was that um, if any of you remember uh, or if any of you saw the video of uh, my run in the Morgan Hill Masters Tour where we bowled on a sports pattern or challenge pattern, whatever you want to call it, I mentioned about how I uh, managed to – I felt like I improved on my ability to be able to watch my ball. And uh, I, I felt like I improved on the ability to be able to watch where I lay the ball down, uh, wh where it passed through the arrows, and where what board it got down lane at the break point, and um, where the ball ended up at the pocket, and how uh, what it did when it hit the pins. I felt like um, my attention to detail, if I guess that's what we want to call it, had improved, and I was able to really see. Uh, a lot better exactly what I did and with that I felt like I was able to repeat shots better and I realized that after this week of uh, week number 19 I realized that I had failed to use that skill that I felt I acquired and because I, I noticed that I wasn't able to you know I was missing left a lot I was missing right uh, there were times where I felt I got a bit unlucky when I hit the pocket um, but yeah one thing's for sure is that I, I failed to use that ability or skill, whatever you want to call it. So um, a couple days after that, I went and I practiced that to make sure that I still had it. And of course, I um, uh, I took a couple of bowling balls that I knew I was going to use for this week of league so that I have it all, you know, good and ready to go. And um, yeah, one thing's for sure is after that Morgan Hill Master Store had concluded, I felt like... Uh, Bowling on a house shot would be 10 times easier, and I uh, put two and two together, like, why didn't I capitalize on that in week number 19, and that's when I realized this is why, that is why, because of this, because of that, all that stuff, so here we go uh, into week number 20, uh, looking for some redemption, and I felt good, I felt better than ever, so um, the question is now, how have I, how have I performed after, uh, you know, practicing that ability to be able to watch my ball. Because like I said, that, whatever that is, uh, being able to focus on all those things better helped me to repeat shots better. And, you know, being on the house shot, of course, it makes it a lot easier, a lot less pressure. So the question is, how did we do? We're going to find out right now. Let's roll the clip. Okay, everybody, so here we go. Week number 20 underway. So in the 10 minutes of practice, I tested what, uh, what, I, ha uh, what I brought with me, as I usually do. And the ball that really gave me what I was looking for, the one that clicked for me, was the Trend 2. So I picked that one up, uh, lined up on 22. Don't know where I slid, but I probably should have paid attention to that. But uh, going into this, I tried uh, to, you know, use that whatever you want to call it, skill, ability, uh, that I tr uh, felt I improved on from the Morgan Hill Masters Tour, F trying to focus on where I laid it down, where the ball passed through the arrows, uh, trying to get it on my break point target, which is about right here, if uh, not the best way to uh, uh, explain this, but yeah, I could tell like the ball would grab at the lane and start hooking about right here, so I knew where I needed to get the ball, but uh, obviously paying attention to where I laid it down and where it passed through the arrows would help me with that, and for some reason, uh, it, it would play a part in getting me to repeat shots. So, um, 
yeah, uh, I, I knew this entire night I had to keep that in my head. I couldn't get distracted. I couldn't let that escape my mind. I knew I needed to keep that in my head to be able to help me repeat these shots. And uh, unfortunately, that first shot, uh, as you can see, everything about it was wrong. And I ended up with an open as well. Not the best of starts. But here, I also got it incorrect. And I also... Uh, released it in an incorrect way uh, but I could tell I missed my breakpoint target I got it to the right late if that makes any sense like you see I got it there and I was supposed to get it kind of like over here so I kind of expected for that to happen and I knew it too so I knew okay I, I'm obviously not getting it right uh, I missed my my target and ended up like passing it and I saw that too I, I paid attention to all of that so I knew what not to do for the next uh, for the next shot okay so here we go into the third frame after a spare in the second and an open in the first but we're back on the right so how have I recovered I made the move to 21 because I, I completely forgot that these lanes were um, based on the 10 minutes of practice I noticed that my stuff was not necessarily you know slapping into the pocket it was getting a lot of like light hit or deflection or something like that so I thought maybe I should move a board over for everything and I forgot to do that in the first two frames so in the third frame I moved over a board from 22 to 21 and it hit the pocket stronger I noticed that but as you can see it didn't continue when it hit the pins and it left me a 10 and I did feel like I didn't necessarily add enough at the at the um, release point, so I thought, all right, I'm gonna try to do the same thing on the left lane, uh, line up on 21, but put more hand at the bottom because I felt like the ball kind of just you know rolled off my hand. I didn't add anything to it because I knew that the shot was correct. It was everything I was looking for, but as you can see, 10 pin. I think it was a ringing 10. So I tried it here, added more, and I got what I was looking for. All right, so going into this shot, I reminded myself to not only do what I did on the left lane, but to also not uh, be careful with the speed because I didn't want to get too quick with it because I had a, had a fear that uh, the ball would probably like deflect when it hit the pocket. And you could see there that I was like, oh, that was kind of a close call. I didn't think that would hold, but it did. And I saw that seven too. All right, so on this shot, I remember that I got it left. Yeah, right there. See, left all the way down and somehow got hold. So on this shot right here, it looked good to me. I got it where I wanted it, all the way down, but it came back light. Now, I couldn't explain that. Another really good shot right there. But I feel, I feel like I gave it too much time uh, to line up to the pocket. You can see it totally just like had a lot of time to roll there. See that? Way too much time to roll into the pocket. And almost had a ringing 10, but luckily the 6 kind of tapped it from the bottom. But I didn't let any of that get to me with the 10 pins. I stuck with my plan, stayed on 21, kept doing what I tried to do. And I was like, get that 10 out of here. So here we are on the 10th frame now. And I believe I did some experimenting since we were on the 10th. And I already put in a good score. But that right there was a great shot. Unfortunately, the messenger did not deliver. And of course, when the shot looks good, when the form looks good at the foul line, it doesn't work. I hate when that happens. Can I pick up a 10 pin more convincingly this time? Yeah, that's a little better. That last one was a close call. Skinny jeans. Okay, so upon seeing that 10 pin, I felt the need to make a little bit of a switch because that wasn't the first time I'd seen 10. Uh, remember the ringing 10? That, well, what well, could have been ringing 10, but the six came out and tapped it. I felt the need to pick up the Marvel Pearl and move to the right. And I, I so I tried that, lined up on 20, saw that, and I was like, maybe that's what I need to do for the next game. I felt pretty good about it. All right, so here we go with game number two. Uh, my new game plan being the Marvel Pearl on the left, and I'll keep the trend two on the right. Yep, 
Yeah, unfortunately, I let that one go wrong, and you could see there, it didn't really get back around, and I end up leaving a... I don't even know what that is, but it's definitely not a baby split, because you could see that pin hiding in the back. Now, this wasn't textbook right here, but at least I got it. All right, so moving back to the right lane for the second frame. Continuing with the trend two because I had absolutely no problems on this right lane with it. Seemed good, but nope. So having another 10 pin to deal with, I think that's our third one of the night. But it seems that me picking up the 10 pins gets more and more convincing. Okay, so check this out. I realized going into this shot that I needed to move a board over for everything because the lanes were a little bit were looking a little bit oily. Remember how I mentioned the trend two? I was on 22, but then I had to move to 21 because of it. So I tried this with the Marvel Pearl. I moved to 19, and that first half of the lane it looked like I got it where I wanted it, but then when it got down lane, I realized I didn't get it to push out right enough. And as you can see, that was like on the 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 10 board down lane or something like that, and ended up uh, going what looked like through the nose and I ended up leaving a six pin but even though I, I kinda like missed a little bit left like that I could still tell that stand, uh, lining up on 19 definitely didn't seem like the right call so I would move back to 20 for the next shot alright so even though I left the 10 pin on this right lane again uh, I didn't feel the need to make any changes so I stuck with it Beautifully done. But I did think that it would go kind of high. All right, so this one, unfortunately, uh, I think it got hung up on my fingers. Yeah, at the release. Like, it, you can't really notice it, but I could feel it. It kind of got, like, hung up on my middle finger, and I couldn't let go of it the right way. And as a result, I put it on the wrong path, and again, it went through the nose. And I ended up leaving, I think that's the 3 six, ten. Looks, no, actually, no, that's the 3, 6, 9, 10, because I remember, uh, I think I picked up this Marvel Pearl, moved way to the left, and tried hooking at it. Believe me when I tell you, this would have worked if I'd have used a, a different bowling ball, one that hooked better. You see that? Didn't get back. All right, so going into frame number six, I believe. Continue to stick with the trend two after that strike that went high. And I was still getting what I was looking for. So here's what I was doing actually. Let me explain to you guys what was helping me repeat the shots. Like I mentioned, focused on the lay down, focused on where I went through the arrows, focused on the break point target down lane, put it all together to make a line for myself. And here's what I did. So I couldn't tell exactly what board, but I knew this was like around, I want to say 17, 18, where I was laying it down. And I tried to get it to go over third arrow, so 15 board, so or 15 at the arrows as they call it. So that's what I tried to do. That helped me with the first half of the lane. And then, of course, getting it to about four board, I want to say, maybe three board at, down at the breakpoint target about right here. So with that, with my eyes or my mind or whatever, uh, using my imagination, I guess we could call it, I formed that imaginary line and with that I, it like all clicked together for me and I'm like I have it I can repeat shots now and that's what led to this I literally kept that in my head all night I did not let it escape me and here we go with a uh, different ball we went with the ball change because the Marvel Pro clearly wasn't working out I went with the fate and unfortunately, you don't see it because old St. Nick over here, taking forever to pick up his ball, he's one of those ones, unfortunately, that look, like fiddles around with the ball on the ball return looking for the holes and picks it up by the holes. And that, for me, is a, one of my pet peeves. E uh, and I'm not just saying that because I have my camera propped up right here. Uh, even, even if I didn't have my camera propped up right there, that, that's one of my pet peeves. And you know what? That, bring, that gives me a, a question for you guys. Uh, put it down in the comment section. What is one of your like pet peeves in bowling? What is something that you hate that other people do that really just ugh, really gets at you? But anyways, uh, 
going on to the right lane now after that incredible shot with the fate. Clearly, it was the one to be on the left lane. I liked it. Um, lined up on 21, just like I did with the Trend 2. Uh, weird that I wasn't getting what I wanted from the Trend 2 on the left lane, but I was with the fate. But you know what? If it works, do it, right? So again, tried my best to lay the ball down where I wanted it to, and I got the result again. So I hate to do this, but let me explain to you why this this uh, thing with people picking up the bowling ball by the holes is a pet peeve. Look at this. Just like, honestly, what is so difficult about just picking up your ball? You know, why do you got to go looking for the holes and then picking it up like that? Anyways, my apologies for sounding like I'm getting angry or irritated over that, but Jesus Christmas, I really do not like when people do that. Again, even if I didn't have my camera propped up right here, it's still a pet peeve of mine. But anyway, there I go, trying to repeat again, but unfortunately I got the ball too far to the right. And not only that, I missed my breakpoint target as well. I got it over here instead of over here, and I paid the price. And the funny thing was, is I was actually having a little bit of a battle with uh, uh, this uh, lady that was on the opposing team. Um, I think she got like 213 to finish and I realized that I um, we were we were just uh, having a fun little battle and um, after that shot I realized I needed to strike to tie her at least because she had 213 and I needed to strike to get 213 so the question is do I get the strike to tie No, I don't. You see? And there, yeah, I'm thinking, great, I just lost to this lady. And she was laughing at me. Uh, not in a way like, ha ha, screw you. But like, you know, like I said, we were just having a little bit of fun there with that. But yeah, 10 pin, of course. And I ended up, I ended up with 212 to finish that one off. So anyways, here we go with the last game of the night. And that path to redemption is looking really good right about now. I think we got uh, 237 in the first game, 212 in the second. We're definitely on the path to redemption and recovery from that horrible series from last week so again re plan remains unchanged working with a trend two on the right and things are still looking good but that was a close call that was a high pocket hit there and you i don't think you could see the look on my face but i was like yikes also i forgot to mention part of the reason why that look on my face when i was like yikes uh i let it go wrong but somehow it all worked out in the end so here i go with the fate Plan remains unchanged. And unfortunately, I messed that one up. And also, I messed it up at the uh, at the release as well. So, I paid for two errors. Wrong path. I missed the break point again. And messed up the release. And I paid for it with a split. I wasn't about to do a backup ball again after that horrible attempt that I did with the dark code. Uh, remember during that post bowling uh, that, that we did, I think it was on week 18 where I tried it and I went into the gutter. My friend Ivan laughed at me for that one. So again, lay down at 17, 18, 15 at the arrows, about 4 at the break point. Beauty. Great shot. Let's move on. All right, so this shot, I laid it down on the wrong path. That, that was about 21 at, at the lay down, uh, just right of third arrow. That was probably 16. And you could see, well, sort of, you could kind of see that uh, I didn't get it at my intended target down lane. You see that? That is so left compared to where I actually meant to get it, which was like over here. But thanks to the house shot, I got the hold. All right, so back on the right lane with the trend two. Repeat the shot. It did hit light, but you know what? I did what I had to do. All right, so on this left lane, the path was definitely a lot more different in comparison to the right lane. Look at that. A little bit straighter and a lot more left compared to the right lane. You know, that, that break point, I'm, I'm sending that probably like on the around that 10 board area or maybe the eight I don't know again I'm not one I can't see things perfectly here compared to like when I'm actually out there but you could definitely see compared to the, uh, what I'm doing with this trend too how much uh, different the path is 
Like on this left lane, I'm literally putting the ball down at around 20, 21. Uh, sending it probably in between the third and fourth arrow. Meanwhile, here, I'm laying it down at about 17, right over third arrow. Look at that, the more right. That's literally like right of the, the seven board right there that that went down. Big difference. But I was definitely feeling good. I felt like I was going off on the main stage. Fell off. But I got it there. Oh, there we go. Left off my hand right there. Strike streak over. I definitely wasn't going to take any chances here. I hooked at this one because I did not want to uh, end this with an open. Wanted to keep it clean. All right, and I think we're now on the 10th frame here. Definitely got redemption for sure. Great form, but unfortunately the shot didn't hold. And I think I did get it uh, even just a pinch more left than I have been all the shots that I've been getting strikes on with the fade here. And yeah, I went high into the pocket and I leave the four. Playing it safe, like usual. And yeah, you see my reaction there. I thought I'd miss that. I thought the ball was totally just gonna like hook stop and then totally like just pass right by the four. All right, so this shot right here was practically identical, if not like the exact same as that last shot that I just took. Look at that. Entered the pocket with a lot of angle and I left the nine this time. But it didn't matter because we got our redemption. All right, so at week number 20 is done. Let's take a look at the summary. Game one, I got 237. Game number two, I got 212. And game number three, I topped it off with a 235 to get me a series total of 684. Oh yeah, that is definitely redemption at its finest right there. Sucks that it wasn't a 700 series, but I'll take it. Uh, yeah, the series required to raise my average was 631, and I definitely destroyed that. And my pin total after week number 20 is now 12,053. We've made it to the 12,000 mark. That's real nice. And number of games played is now 60, and I managed to bring my average back into 200. So I'm a part of the 200 club again. Yay! And, um, yeah, last week's average being 199, that, that hurt to see, being back in the 190s club, but I'm back. And uh, now, um, going into week 21, I'm definitely feeling a lot better and, uh, about, uh, you know, about everything because of what I did here. I, um, you know, practiced what uh, I, I said I was going to practice, you know, like paying attention to like watching my ball and watching where I lay it down, what I, uh, where it passes over the arrows and all that stuff. Uh, I applied that to this and it worked out nicely and I'm very glad that it all worked out the way it did. So uh, going into week 21, I definitely feel like I'm going to, um, you know, crush it because, um, you know, using this thing that I'm doing to help me repeat shots it, it definitely helped. It's really working, and I really like what I was seeing. So uh, definitely going to use this uh, to go into week 21 to try to raise that average because uh, I'm definitely under a little bit of pressure here, you know, because uh, if I mess this up, I'm back in the 190s club again, and I want to stay in the 200 uh, average club. So, um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. So uh, I'm Frank the Tank. I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, shot of redemption, and uh, – can't wait to see what happens in week 21. See you guys later.